So here we are with the final part in this project, the thimble. Um, this is going to be a, a fun part to make, a little more challenging than the first ones, um, primarily because there, there's a whole lot of different operations to do on this part. It's a small part, but there's a lot going on. And uh, also there are, are several operations that are, that are a little bit out of the ordinary. So we're going to have to figure out a way to, to uh, hold the part and to fixture the part in order to cut these divisions, for instance, around the uh, thimble and also stamp the numbers. Those are two special setups we're going to have to work out according to what we have on hand. You know, the way I do it's going to be a little bit different probably than the way you do it because you won't have the same tools at your disposal as I do and vice versa. So you have to kind of use your imagination to, to come up with these custom setups for certain operations. But that's, you know, that's the fun of machining. That's, that's where your imagination comes in to play. So let's take a look at this part. Um, we have, what do we have to do here? We have, uh, we have some basic turning to do. We have turn this diameter here down, this, uh, what is it, uh, 1.036. We have a diameter here we have to turn down for the neural, 1.1 inches. Uh, we have some facing to do on both, both edges, or both ends. Okay, this end we have a raised portion we have to leave behind. Uh, we have a reamed hole here. We have a tapped hole in the center. We have the, we have to engrave the, uh, the divisions. We have to stamp the, the numbers. Lots of things to do. And like I said, we have to watch out for order of operations because if we get um, some things done before others, we might have a hard time doing them later on or it, may, it might even be impossible to do later on. So we have to make sure we don't paint ourselves into a corner. So let's just uh, go over the order of operations for this part, at least how I would do it. Um, I'm going to use a piece of uh, inch and a half mild steel. Um, we're turning it down to 1.1 inches. I, I suppose inch and a quarter would be more appropriate, but I don't have any on hand. So we're using inch and a half. We'll have to take some heavy cuts to get it down to the right diameter, but that's, that's no big deal. I think to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to chuck up on, on one, end, one end of the, of the bar and I'm going to turn uh, the diameter of the thimble here for the divisions and the, the number stamps. I'm going to turn the diameter for the neural and I'm going to face off the left, left hand end of the part. Once I get that done, I'll put the neural on while it's still chucked up and I'll part the part the uh, part off with the parting tool. So that'll take care of uh, the neural and our diameters and the facing on one end. Okay, after that I think I'll probably chuck up on the this part here, this 1.036 diameter, and I'll face the, the, the right hand end to length to this 0.750 plus nothing, plus nothing minus 5 dimension. And we have to leave this raised portion, this 6 tenths diameter raised portion here. Uh, we have to make sure and leave that behind. And after that, I think what I'll do is I'm not going to put the uh, 7 16 20 thread in right away. And the reason why is that we have to have some way to hold on to this part to do the uh, engrave the uh, divisions and also stamp the numbers. We can't hold on to the knurled section because that's not an accurate surf surface anymore. Once you knurl it, you can no longer fixture off that. You can't hold on this this surface because that's where we're, we're doing all the machining. So the only thing left to do really is to hold on to the bore. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to bore a 3 8 hole through the center of the part. And I'm going to press it onto a, a tapered mandrel. Then I can hold on to the mandrel to do this work on the outside here. And when we get our, our divisions in and our, our numbers stamped in, we'll take the mandrel out, we'll open the hole up to whatever the tap drill size is for 7 16 20, then we'll, we'll tap our 7 16 20 thread. So that's what I mean by order of operations. We have to do things in the right order to keep from getting in trouble on, the, on a part. Um, another thing we have to look at is the diameter for this neural. It's, it has a medium neural called out on it. Okay, whenever I neural a part, I always, I always double check the diameter and make sure that the diameter suits the neural I'm going to use. 
Um, the neural, I know, I know, I don't know how much you know about knurling or how much you've done, but when you we knurl a part, it 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 presses a bunch of lines into the part as it rolls around, and these lines have a pitch to them, the distance between the teeth and the neural. And if you start pressing these in on one side and you roll the, the neural all the way around to the other side, if those lines don't line up with where you start, you're liable to get an overlap, and that creates a, a double neural. Um, I'm sure you've all seen it. It's a, it's an ugly neural. It's it it does it's not nice and clean like it should be. And whenever you see a double neural like that, it's because the diameter didn't match up with the pitch of the neural. So I always I always double check diameters uh, with whatever neural I'm going to use to make sure that uh, I'm not going to get that double neural. So I'm I'm going to show you how to do that right now. It's going to involve a little bit of math, a little bit of algebra specifically. But it's pretty pretty straightforward. Shouldn't be too scary. So let's let's take a look at how we figure out. Let's check out that 1.1 inch diameter and make sure it's going to work with the neural I plan on using. All right. First thing we need to do is look at the neural and see what the pitch is. Okay. This one here is is 25 teeth per inch. Okay. That's that's the the pitch of the neural. So let's uh, let's write that down. 25 teeth per inch. Okay. Um, now we need to figure out the distance between the teeth on this neural. That's the pitch of the neural. And if you remember from some, from some of my threading videos, pitch is equal to 1 over the number of, well from the threading videos, it's threads per inch. Whoops, threads per inch, okay, TPI. In this case it's 1 over teeth per inch. So the pitch is going to equal 1 over 25 in this case, which equals 25, 1 over 40 thousandths. Pitch for this particular neural is 40 thousandths of an inch, okay? So that's one bit of information we need to know. <clears throat> the other bit of information is we need to know what the circumference of the part is on that 1.1 inch diameter. The circumference is a distance around the outside of the part. And the formula for circumference, I think I also went over this in a video, one of the videos. Circumference equals pi times the diameter. Okay, it's a pretty simple, simple formula. We're going to have to kind of remember that because we're going to be using it a couple times here. Um, okay, so what is the circumference of a 1.1 inch diameter? Okay, let's let's work it out. Well, C equals pi d. Um, pi is 3.14, and d in this case is 1.1 inches. Okay, so 3.14 times 1.1 is 3.454 inches. Circumference equals 3.45. All right, so we know how far it is around the outside of our part, around that 1.1 inch diameter. We know the, the spacing between the teeth and the neural. Now what we want to check is we want to make sure, we want to find out if um, this pitch of the neural goes into this 3.454 number evenly. Okay, if it goes in evenly, when the neural goes all the way around the part, it's going to line up, line up with where it started. It's not going to overlap. So the way we do that is we just divide the circumference by the pitch. So your 3.454 dimension divided by 0.04 40 thousandths is going to equal what? Let's see here. 3.454 40 thousandths divide 86.35. Okay, that's 86.35 divisions around the outside, okay? Um, that's a bad thing, okay? We want this to be a whole number. We want this to be 86. We don't want it to be 86 and a third like it is now. Because if it is, when, when the neural rolls all the way around, it's going to overlap by one third of, of a division when it gets back to the start. What we'd rather see is that we'd rather see it come out to 86 or 87 but nothing in the middle. 
So let's uh, let's find out what the diameter that should be for this part. Let's take this take this uh, 86 dimension here, or the 86 uh, divisions, and multiply that by our our 40 thousandths pitch. Okay, and we get. 86, 40 thousandths times, we get 3.44 inches, okay? Um, how about for 87, for 87 divisions? 87 times or 40 thousandths pitch equals 3480 Okay, this is circumference, okay? This is circumference. Now, to find out what our diameter should be for this, for this particular neural, we have to figure out what the diameter is from this circumference. So we're working backwards from this formula. C equals pi d. We want to solve for d. We have c, right? Here's our circumference. We have c and we have pi, so we need to solve for d. So let's uh, rearrange this formula here a little bit. Let's uh, get rid of, uh, let's isolate D in this formula. So we have to divide each side by pi. Um, so C over pi equals D, okay? D equals C over pi. Here's our diameter. We have C, we have the two C's in this case, and we have pi. So let's, let's figure out what that is. Uh, 3.440 is our first C. Divided by pi equals, let's see what that works out to, 3.44. Uh, there is a pi function on here someplace. Let's see. Where's pi? There it is. Pi divide. 1.095. 1.095 inches in diameter. Okay. And let's figure it out for this 3.4. Eighty circumference here. They can divide that by pi, and that works out to three point four eighty divided by pi is one point one zero eight. So these are the these are the diameters we want to make that area that gets snurled. Either one of these. It doesn't matter. You see it was it was drawn 1.1 inches. That's like somewhere in between these two. Okay. So we'll choose one of these. It doesn't, doesn't matter which one. Either one will work just fine. Let's pick this 1.095. It's a little closer to 1.1 than 1.108. So instead of 1.1 we want get a smaller pen here. We want 1.095. That'll be our, our new diameter. So with this particular neural, that'll work out just right. We won't have any double neurals when we make the part. Of course, when you make this part, you may not have this, this particular neural, the same one I have, so you'll have to work the numbers for whatever the pitch is on your neural. And you may come up with a slightly different diameter. But that's how you, that's how you work out the diameter for a neural should always double check that just to make sure because you'll get a much cleaner neural if uh, you know if the diameter matches the neural you're using. So let's uh, move over to the lathe and we'll we'll start making this part.